Thanks for joining us for this webinar event, Exploring Generosity, an Intergenerational Approach. I'm Pauline Wilson, and along with my colleagues on the stewardship team, uh, Darren Phillip, Fiona Penny, and Catherine Southern, we're delighted to host this event. Um, we also have Dave Kendall with us, um, from the church offices and we really appreciate Dave taking the time to join us this evening. In terms of the format for this evening, Darren Phillip will be doing most of the work. Before joining the stewardship team, Darren served for 13 years as a ministry development worker um, at Livingston United Parish. This practical experience, along with Darren's academic research, into worship and learning with all ages together, combine to ensure that we're in for an informed and engaging session this evening. Darren's presentation will be split into three sections, rationale, practices and resources. And these sessions will be interspersed with breakout rooms when everyone will get a chance to speak to other people and share your own thoughts and experiences. At the end of the presentation, there'll be a little bit of time for questions, uh, which you can either submit in writing using the Q&A facility, or you can raise your hand and we will invite you to speak in turn. Before I hand over to Darren, I would like to share some selected verses from Psalm 145 reading from the New International Version. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might, so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendour of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. Let's just pray. Dear God, we thank you for your goodness, your faithfulness, and your compassion towards each of us. As we meet together in this way, we ask for your guidance and wisdom on how to be the church you would have us be, where all generations come together to worship and contribute, to learn from and enjoy each other, to grow together in understanding, and to be encouraged to share the good news with others. We ask you to be at the centre of our time together this evening. May it be a time that encourages us in our service and refreshes us in our practice. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Darren, it's over to you. Thank you. Thanks, Pauline. We're going to begin tonight with a little bit of interactivity. So in the chat box, there is a link that has just appeared and it's about to appear on your screen in the form of a QR code, which you can scan if you're using a mobile device. And it asks you the simple question, what one word comes to mind when you think of stewardship? So if you can, click on the link, or scan the QR code, a little box will appear and you can type in one word you think of when you think of stewardship. You can see appearing on the screen the words as people type them in. The bolder a word appears, the more people have said that word. As you can see, with a variety of words coming in, abundance, sharing, generosity, wisdom, growth, God's gift, responsibility, husbandry, looking after, and the one that's appeared most in bold that most people have said is money. When we think of stewardship, traditionally, maybe we've associated it most with money or time, talents and money. Perhaps you associate stewardship 
with programmes and campaigns that have happened within your congregation. But why have we asked you to do this? Why does this matter? Well, let's begin tonight by taking a look at a widely accepted definition of what it is to be intergenerational. Intergenerational ministry occurs when a congregation intentionally brings the generations together in mutual service, sharing or learning within the core activities of the church in order to live out being the body of Christ to each other and to the greater community. Now notice some of the aspects of that definition that I've highlighted. Being intergenerational is intentional. It happens by design, not by accident. Being intergenerational is mutual. The contribution of each and every age is recognised, valued and needed. And being intergenerational is lived out within the core activities of the church. It's not a club on a Thursday night or a slot within a service. It's an ethos that goes through all the core activities that we do as a church. The Church Courts Act lists stewardship as one of those core activities, as do our vows of membership, where we promise to give a fitting proportion of our time, talents and money, or to give generously of what I am and what I have, depending on which vows you use. Stewardship of God's gifts is one of the core aspects of what it is to be part of a church. If we are to be intergenerational and engage all ages, we therefore need to be intentional about how we enable mutual participation. Because, as we saw in the word cloud, stewardship is most often synonymous with finance, it's often assumed to only be an adult concern, and most stewardship programmes are targeted only at the congregation's adult membership. Most children, after all, are financially dependent. They don't have their own independent income from which they can contribute. They can't always make their own decision about how much and how often they contribute to the work of the church. And the same can be true of other aspects of stewardship. Take time, for example. A child's time is not entirely their own. It's inextricably linked to the time availability of their parents or guardians. A child may wish to contribute their time and their skills to a particular task, but if a parent is not both available and willing to take them, it becomes more difficult for them to participate. Moreover, many of our opportunities for service take place during school hours, which also excludes those who spend much of their week in employment. As many of you will have experienced, the privilege of exercising generosity and stewardship can be transformative and faith forming, and that can be true for people of all ages. If we go back to the roots of the word stewardship, we can discover a more comprehensive understanding in which all ages can participate on a mutual basis. The word in the Bible which we translate as stewardship literally means sorting out or allotting the resources of the household. It was used to refer to household management or home economics, we might call it. But the household to which we now use the word in a Christian context can refer to both the household of the world and the household of the church. The church is the family home of the people of God. So stewardship then refers not only to the resources we have within the church, but how they are used. It's as much about vision as it is about provision. And that's something that all ages can and should contribute to. For as the prophet Joel says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your old folk will dream dreams, your young folk will see visions. In biblical times, the word stewardship was also used in wider society to refer to any arrangement of things, putting things into some sort of order. And taken in that sense of the word, stewardship is about tuning in to God's order of things, finding out what God is doing and joining in. So stewardship 
involves both vision and mission, more core activities of the church in which all ages can be engaged. Thinking of the world as a household, stewardship reminds us that the earth and everything in it belongs to the Lord. What we have is not ultimately ours. It has been generously provided by God who charges us to look after the world in which we live. This not only highlights the importance of stewarding creation, but also opens the way to a more holistic understanding of stewardship, which recognises we can offer any aspect of our lives back to God. Understanding stewardship in this broader sense helps us to open it out to and to include all ages. All generations have a need to give generously of themselves to God so that they may grow in discipleship and that the whole body of Christ is enriched by these offerings. The Church of Scotland stewardship team's core resource is called a narrative of generosity. It encourages us to be generous in all aspects of life by exploring 12 different themes of stewardship. Time, God, gifts, possessions, money, relationships, generations, volunteers, body, mind, earth and vision. And tonight we're going to explore some practices and some resources for engaging all ages in these 12 themes of stewardship so that it might intentionally become part of church life in which all generations can participate. But before we do that, we wanted to offer you an opportunity to talk with one another. We're going to have about 10 minutes in breakout rooms just to give you a chance to introduce yourself to one another. You might like to share with one another a story of a time when you were shown generosity by a generation other than your own. Um, or you might like to share something that your congregation already does to engage all generations in one of these 12 themes of stewardship. So 10 minutes in a breakout room to say hello, where you're from, and share something um, of an experience you've had of showing generosity across generations. In this next part of the evening, we're going to consider some practices which can enable all generations to participate in generous stewardship. One of the practices most associated with stewardship is making an offering during worship. And we're aware that this is a practice that has changed and shifted in many places since the pandemic. So I'd like to invite you to participate in a short poll so that we can see the breadth of practice which already exists. Um, onto your screen will pop up a box um, with a poll question in it which asks which of the following most closely describes your usual offering practice during worship? And you can simply click on the option that most describes your, your church situation. We uplift an offering during worship, we take an offering during the door and dedicate it during worship. We take an offering at the door but don't mention it during worship. We don't uplift an offering. Our practice varies week by week or something else entirely. Here you can see the results um, that about a quarter of people uplift an offering during worship. Um, just over half collect the offering at the door and dedicate it during worship and about 15% um, take the offering at the door, but it doesn't feature within the worship service. A time of offering which is embedded somewhere and somehow, however you do your practice, within the worship service is a great way to engage all generations. It's a time when we allow people to make a response to God's word, both individually and as a community of faith. The time of offering has never simply been a practical means to collect in funds, but a time when we can offer not only what we have, but who we are before God. It's part of our collective worship. So we'd like to offer you some suggestions for how you can make a time of offering inclusive of all ages. Firstly, symbolism. Placing something into a plate is a physical act of opening up to God. Just as we might draw our hands closed 
to draw near to God in prayer, at the offering plate our hands open and symbolise releasing things to God. Perhaps you could think of how to play with elements of symbolism during your time of offering. For example, you might invite people to come forward and bring offerings to the table in person, symbolically offering their whole selves. You could place a mirror at the offering plate, encouraging people to see their gift as a token of their life as they watch their reflection. You might invite people to share a sign of peace with one another during a time of offering as a sign of community. Secondly, creativity. You can link financial with other types of stewardship. During a time of offering, come up with creative ways for people to offer non-monetary gifts to God as a way of enabling everyone to participate, regardless of age or financial dependency. For example, you might invite people to draw or craft a talent that they can offer to God and place that in the offering plate. You might provide small tokens or glass beads which people can hold to symbolise an aspect of their life that they would like to offer to God and then place these offerings in an appropriate location. You could create connection cards, which are cards unique to that week's service with specific pledges for actions relating to that week's theme, which people can tick and place into the offering basket. But remember to make sure there are options for action which take place outside of school hours. Actions can also take place directly during a time of offering. For example, you could collect donations for a food bank, invite people to sign up for acts of service, create cards to send to those who are isolated. The list could go on. Another way you can engage all ages in a time of offering is singing. A well-chosen song is one of the simplest ways that different generations can be engaged together. It doesn't need to be a children's song to engage young children but it does need to be something that's accessible to people who can't read along with the words in a book or on a screen. That can be done by incorporating signs or actions, or just by using a short song with repetitive words, which children can easily pick up and join in with. There's a selection of short songs towards the end of CH4. For example, the Kenyan chant, Bless the Lord, at number 756, can make an excellent call to offering, while the South African hymn, Send Me, found at number 800, can be sung while an offering is being uplifted. In the follow-up information you'll receive after this webinar, we'll include some suggestions of suitable music, together with links so you can have a listen and hear how they sound. An alternative to singing is silence. Even very young children respond well to silence, when it's used to invite wonder. Finally, you could share stories. Being intergenerational is about relational connection. So you could invite people to share stories or interview people about why they give, about how they serve God, about why responding to God in this way is important to them. You can invite people to share stories in small groups with those around them, or you can collect stories by inviting people to send you photographs or drawings in advance, which can be shown during a time of offering. Now, earlier we discussed how broadening our understanding of stewardship can help to include all ages. So we're very briefly now going to look at the 12 themes from a narrative of generosity and consider some practices to go with each of these themes, which can help promote a whole life of generous stewardship. And these are just some ideas. So I apologize that this is a bit of a whistle stop tour through the themes. Firstly, looking at the theme of time, a really useful exercise to conduct as a congregation is a time survey. Using a large sheet of paper, you create a grid which has a column for each day of the week and rows for different time slots, which could be as simple as morning, afternoon, evening. Then give everyone some sticky dots and ask them to put a sticker in every time slot when they would typically be free. That is, 
a time when they're not at work, school, a club or some other commitment. And this allows you at a glance to see the times when people tend to be free or busy. You could even use different coloured dots for different generations if you want to see and focus on the generations that are currently not engaging or are being left out. And the next step is to compare this to your church calendar. How does it match up? What could be changed to create opportunities for service that different generations can take part in together? On the God theme, look at practices which draw you near to God and nurture that relationship. How could all ages be included in those practices? What opportunities are there for people of different ages to pray with or for each other? As an example, one congregation I was speaking with recently creates trading cards where everyone gets a little card and they write their name, their hobbies, their interests, um, any worries or concerns, any important upcoming events in their lives. And these cards are then traded and swapped around the congregation with people praying for whoever is on the card they receive each week. Worshipping with all ages together and enabling all generations to read and discover the Bible together are important practices. And at the end of tonight's session, we'll introduce you to some resources which can enable you to do this. When exploring the stewardship of gifts, one practice which can help people offer their gifts to God and can help to discern how God might be calling you to serve is to conduct a gifts audit. A simple way of doing this is to give everyone three shapes or colours of paper representing head, hands and heart. On the head, invite them to write down or draw a picture of their intellectual gifts, things they know or have learnt. On the hand, invite them to write or draw practical skills. And on the heart, invite them to write or draw hobbies, passions or interests. These gifts can then collectively be offered to God. But you could also collect them in and cluster similar gifts together, allowing you to see a picture of the gifts God has blessed your congregation with. In this example, the largest cluster of gifts all related to gardening, so the congregation decided to begin a community garden by starting from the place of the gifts that God had provided. Thinking of stewarding our possessions, many churches operate swap shops or possession libraries where you can trade clothes that no longer fit, toys that are no longer played with, books you have read, or tools you don't need very often, and much more. Could there be opportunities for repurposing or upcycling old possessions, allowing all generations to get together and take part in such an activity? Another practice which can help children learn the joy of giving from the abundance that we have is a favourite things box. This involves giving things which aren't second hand or the cheapest we can buy, but giving to others those things which are our own favourites. So when you buy a treat or a special thing for you, you also buy a second one and put it in the favourite things box. When it's filled, it can then be shared with others, for example, through a local food pantry or food bank. When it comes to stewardship of money, we've already discussed the challenges that can exist for generations who don't have independent finances. But that doesn't prevent us encouraging a habit of generosity throughout life. Stewardship is about giving in proportion to what we have. One fundraising strategy which can emphasise this is to set out a number of envelopes, each with a different number on them. People choose their own envelope privately and give the amount written on it. These envelopes are returned and given thanks for with the gift of one pound valued just as much as the gift of 100 pound. And all of these amounts quickly add up. If you numbered envelopes one to 200 and each was filled with the appropriate amount, the total you collected in would be more than 20,000 pounds. But by including smaller amounts, even pence amounts, 
yet still encouraging everyone to select the biggest envelope they can afford. We promote a culture which helps enable everyone to give. By affording children the opportunity to take part in this way, we enable them to be full participants in the life of the church and signal to them that what they have comes ultimately from God. Cultivating generosity from a young age begins in the home, where open and honest conversations about money and how we use it helps children and young people to shape their own values and practices. One practice in the home which can help foster a culture of stewardship is to divide pocket money into three jars, give, save and spend. Money in the spend pot is available to be used freely. Money in the save pot is for a longer term goal. And money in the give pot is for giving away, for being generous to a cause of your choice. Many banks or financial service providers now offer money apps and even prepaid debit cards which children can use. The example on the screen is the Rooster Money app and card from NatWest Group, and it allows parents to pay an allowance to their children, and the child then splits that allowance into three separate pots, give, save and spend. Money in the spend pot goes onto the debit card to use, but money in the save pot doesn't. Money in the give pot can be given to a charity, including a church, of the child's choice, any charity that's registered on the Just Giving platform, with the parent having to approve any donation before the funds actually leave. Tools such as this can help with financial education, as well as developing a habit of generous and proportionate giving. Turning to the relationships theme, Congregational life is often structured in such a way to mean different generations spend time separated from one another in different activities. This leads to what's known as the one-eared Mickey Mouse model, where younger generations have very little overlap with the adult congregation. And as they become older, this means there are very few relational connections which draw them into the life of the congregation. Being good stewards of our relationships means carving out intentional time and space for relationships to develop across difference so that all feel part of the community. Recovering the value of simple practices such as hospitality can help with this, as can making space for church days out or residential weekends, things that help us to focus on being together not just doing together. And when we name that sort of activity a stewardship, it recognises that relating to one another is also an offering we make to God. And that's what sits at the heart of our generations theme, recognising the gifts that each generation brings to the church community, recognising that we are all disciples together. There are no disciples in waiting. This means entrusting everyone with responsibilities, from welcoming at the door, to painting the fence, to designing an event poster. There are a variety of skills across the generations in our congregations, which can offer an invitation to participation. And that links in nicely with the volunteers theme. Often we place adults in a role of volunteer and children in a role of being served. But what if sometimes we flip that, ensuring that all ages have an opportunity for service? I know I'm very guilty of um, a child offers to help and saying, no, no, don't worry, it's all taken care of. But changing that so that we always say yes to an offer of help, even if it's less convenient, helps to teach the value of generosity. We may not think of our bodies as a stewardship issue, but how we use our bodies is. Understanding stewardship as looking after God's household recognises this as a call not only to look after our own bodies, but for the life of our church community to be arranged in such a way as to care for one another's bodies. We need to look at our buildings, our practices and our activities 
and ask how accessible are they for all bodies? And thinking of bodily activities, things like walking, singing, creating, playing games can also be a great way of bringing different generations together relationally. The same is true of our minds. Our minds are gifts from God to be looked after. All ages have a capacity for wonder, and practices such as meditation and contemplation engage the very old and the very young alike. Some people fear mixing young children in silence, anxious about noise or disturbance. Yet many a pantomime or magic show has children sitting in spellbound silence, even in the midst of a noisy event. Silence can't be enforced, but when it's curated well, it can be a moment of connection across generations. The godly play practice of asking I wonder questions can be a really effective way of inviting people in to such a space. We're all keenly aware of the fragile state of the earth on which we live. Stewardship recognises the earth and everything in it as God's, as something in which we are invited to live and to participate. Issues around stewardship of creation can be a great connecting point for both conversation and for action across generations. Simple activities in creation, such as litter picking, community gardening, bird watching, or upcycling, are the sorts of communal endeavours where all ages can be easily involved. Now, I said at the beginning that stewardship is about vision, discerning what God's vision for the world is and joining in with it. This can be re revealed to people of any generation, meaning we, we needn't restrict our decision making only to adults. There are many ways to crowdsource views which can then be fed into a Kirk session before it makes its final decision. For example, by holding an all-age gathering to discuss a big issue, by hosting intergenerational focus groups, or by inviting responses to be submitted in creative ways, for example by drawing, not just in writing. So those are just 12 themes of stewardship. I'm sure we could have come up with many others. But the key thing to note is by that by considering a wide variety of gifts from God and how we can respond to them, all generations can be engaged in a whole life approach to generosity. We're going to pause there. That was a lot of information coming at you. So we're going to pause and return to our breakout rooms for about 10 minutes again. And I invite you to consider, in everything you've just heard, what practices stood out to you? Do you have other ideas you could share with your group for how to engage all ages in one of these stewardship themes? Welcome back, everyone. In the final part of this evening's webinar, I'd like to introduce you to some resources prepared by the National Stewardship Team, which you can use to help all ages together explore God's generosity. These Exploring Generosity resources cover the 12 stewardship themes we have discussed tonight. Nine of the themes are currently available. Time, God, Gifts, Possessions, Money, Generations, Volunteers, Earth and Vision together with an introductory guide which helps you get the most out of them. The remaining three themes of relationships, body and mind will be released early in 2024. These resources can be used to hold an intergenerational gathering or event on the given theme, or they can be used to plan intergenerational worship or used in fresh expressions of church such as Messy Church. Each resource is split into two parts. The first is a core session, which is a ready-made event lasting one hour, which you can pick up and use. It's divided into four sections. Gather, which offers simple activities to set the scene. Explore, which suggests ways of presenting and unpacking the Bible reading. Create, which suggests crafts, cooking, or other creative ways to engage with the theme, and respond, which contains activities involving prayer or action.
There are two activities in each section in the core session. So if you'd like to offer a half hour session, you simply choose just one activity from each. The second part of the resource is called Adapt and Expand. And this contains around 20 or so additional ideas on the theme, split into the same four headings, Gather, Explore, Create and Respond. These can be used to tailor the session to your own context, swapping some of the core session for activities more suited to your group or to the time available or to the setup of your space. These resources could also be used to expand the theme to last over three or four weeks. Adapt and Expand also contains some share and reflect conversation starters to help open up a discussion across generations and a list of suggested songs which could be used in intergenerational worship. Altogether, there are over 300 activities across the Exploring Generosity resources. Each theme also offers a printable planning guide so that you can easily put together your own session and see at a glance what's happening when and what resources are required. So how do these resources work across different ages and stages of life? Canadian researcher David Sinos built on the work of Joyce Ballou, identifying four distinct spiritual styles which people use to relate to God. Word refers to connecting with God through words, knowledge and intellect, a concrete head spirituality which engages well with sermons, discussions, Bible studies and spoken prayers. Emotion refers to connecting with God through emotions, feelings and relationships. A concrete heart spirituality that engages well with music, dance or drama. Symbol refers to connecting with God through symbols, metaphors and mystery a mystical heart spirituality which connects well with imagery and silence as well as nature. And action refers to connecting with God through doing God's work in the world, a head and hand spirituality which engages well with volunteering, campaigns and acting for justice. While many adults might be comfortable with some of the styles in more than one of these categories, Sinos found that children have just one dominant spiritual style. So to connect well across generations, we need to make sure that all four spiritual styles are incorporated in whatever we do so that no one is left out. The core session of each Exploring Generosity theme contains a balance of all four of these styles. And every activity is labelled with the symbols for word, emotion, symbol or action, so that you can ensure that whatever combination of activities you use, there are connecting points for everyone. We also label with a footprint symbol any activities which don't require any reading or writing. These are the activities that are particularly suitable when preschool age children are there, or those who don't read those who struggle with vision, or those whose first language isn't English. Let's take a closer look at an example of how each activity is laid out. You can see to the left of the activity title, the symbol showing that this activity requires no reading or writing. Just to the right of the title is an indication of the amount of time typically required for this activity. And next to that, are the icons representing the spiritual styles that this activity engages. You can see that the example on the screen connects with those who have an emotion or symbol preference. Directly under the title is a one-line summary of what the activity involves, allowing you at a glance to find the sort of thing you're looking for. Below that is a you will need kit list. And we always ensure that there are a number of activities in each session which require no resources at all, ideal for when you need something last minute. Finally, there's a set of concise instructions addressed to the session leader. And any responses or readings appear in bold so that they are easily identified. 
These resources are designed to help you make stewardship a regular and accessible part of church life for people of all ages. They're available to download by scanning the QR code on the screen or visiting tinyurl.com slash xgen, the address that's just appeared in the chat box. But we'll also send that address to you with the follow-up material to tonight's webinar. For those of you who have access to Insight, you can also download all of them from the Stewardship page, together with lots of other worship resources, Bible studies, and much more. The National Stewardship Team is also here to support you in getting the best out of these resources, in engaging your whole congregation in stewardship and generosity, and in offering wider support to look at any aspect of the 12 themes we've discussed tonight. We cover every parish, both in Scotland and beyond, and we're always happy to discuss your situation and offer what support we can. We'd love to hear from you, so please stay in touch after this webinar. One of the easiest ways is to, to speak to us is by emailing stewardship at churchofscotland.org.uk.